I guess for me, my my story with regards to toys uh, was after I saw Return of the Jedi, and of course, not long after that, Christmas, you know, and I was hoping to get toys, and I actually have Polaroids that just above my head uh, of my desk here of me mm-hmm. with some of my first ever toys I ever got. Uh, I got the ATST or the Chicken Walker, as I, yep. it was known back then. The Chicken Walker, I got that. I got the speeder bike, I got a scout yep. trooper, and I got uh, the die cast Millennium Falcon and Slave One. Mm-hmm. And that was the sort of beginning there for me. And then I started getting the figures and they're all on Return of the Jedi cards at the time, of course. And I got yep. Luke. I never got an Obi-Wan. And I always wanted an Obi-Wan Kenobi figure and I never got one. But I had yeah. Luke and Luke and Bespin fatigues. I had the Luke, uh, Jedi Luke from Return. And I, I probably ended up I'd say probably close to 50 to 60 Star Wars figures. My my parents bought them for me all the time. But probably the greatest, like the vehicles, I got a few of those. I was quite lucky. Um, yeah. I got the Y-Wing, which got destroyed. And unfortunately, I, I don't have any more, yeah. which I would have loved. But probably the best thing was my, my father worked at David Jones, uh, which is like... Um, how would you describe like a department store and mm. at, at Toomble. And one morning he ushered me in very early. He said, Adam, we, we just got this new Star Wars toy and I want to show you what it is. And I'm like, oh, mm. cool. So I, of course, walked up and there was the Imperial shuttle from oh, Return of the nice. Jedi. And I've just yeah. like, I've lost it. And there was like, there was like a whole end cap of them, you know, because Star Wars, oh. Star Wars mm. was there. So there were six there. And he's like, have a look at that. And he goes, do you reckon that's cool? And I went, Yes, it is. That's that's really cool. And this was like in January. I can't remember what it would have been the year after start. I'm like, oh, that's so amazing. And yeah. uh, I can't remember what the price was on it or anything like that. And and I I kept thinking about it. And it was the night before my birthday. And my father comes carrying a box with a sheet in. And we lived oh. in a, a little one bedroom apartment at Red Hill. So yeah. you know, both my parents worked, and it was always a struggle to get stuff. And walked up and he goes, I'm going to give this to you now. And he takes off the sheet and there it was. Oh. I, I actually had the Imperial shuttle and it had the electronic firing buttons at the back. Um, and, you know, we put it together and I had this thing from probably about the age of, of five mm. all the way through to being a teenager. And I had a lot of my vintage, but over the years, I lost figures or they mm. got, oh, I destroyed them. You know, being a kid, I played with them. And of course, I yeah. ripped everything off. But I kept a few things. I I, I still have my die-cast Millennium Falcon. I will say yeah. this. It's in two parts. It falls apart. The landing gears are broke. has no dish. has no clear canopy. But I still have what's left of it. Mm. Um, mm. I had the Max Rebo band. I had that. and uh, But over time, I lost a lot of things. And when my... my unfortunately, my parents divorced i Mm. left a lot of my stuff at our house Mm. and when it all got cleaned out in this trunk because it was kept all my toys were kept in the trunk in the shed yeah it got tossed so the the imperial shuttle was tossed but what was left of the y-wing was just tossed a lot of my vintage figures were were binned and and it was no one's fault it was yeah. just it was just forgotten because I went oh there's just junk in that trunk, oh. and when it got cleaned out, it all got thrown away. Mm. And when I found out at the time, you know, Star Wars was not really you know it was sort of on the on the cusp of coming back. You know, there were boom whispers. I mm. sort of didn't care. I was like, oh well, they're gone. I'm upset, mm. but eh, you know. And then mm. about a couple of years later, they announced oh there's this this new line of Star Wars figures where we're beginning to produce them again. And mm. the first figure I bought was Obi-Wan Kenobi because <laughs> that was the one I wanted. Yep. And then I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to keep these in the packet, you know, the pa- these yeah. pair of... Of course I didn't. I, I opened every figure. I was like, I'm like, I'm 13. I, I haven't learned my lesson. Like, yeah, you because know, I'd seen vintage ones and I was, like, oh, that was like, oh, that's 50 bucks to buy that vintage figure now or that one's 100 yeah. or that one's 200, you know. They were around that price at that time when those figures were coming out. I'm like, wow, that's ridiculous, you know. And I remember I had that as a kid and then I started buying them all and I bought every figure that came out. Yeah. And then, of course, I saw the Millennium Falcon and it was like, 
that was the ship I wanted. So I bought yeah. that the one in the orange box, the 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 original, the first one oh, yes, that had yes, been yes. done by from the from the original mold. So I got that, and I got a Tie Fighter, and I just started buying everything I could. But I started to keep things in boxes, and then I just couldn't help myself. I had to open everything, even yeah, at cool. that I, even at that age. Yeah. I wanted to open up, and I had people saying, "You know, Adam, you're 13, 14, 15, and you're opening up toys and playing with them." And I was like, "Yeah, but I, so, I, 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 yeah. I, I, but that was that was my outlet with what I was going through with with my yeah. parents." And, you know, I, I'd find myself sitting at my desk or in my room on the floor with the Falcon and trotting down. I'm like, I, man, I feel like a kid again. And there was that reemergence due to the toys of me and my love for Star Wars really sort of to boost again. And, mm. uh, and then one day, of course, I was handed three Polaroids of me as a child and that Christmas where I got those first things. Yeah, and yeah. probably my biggest regret, and there, there are two things I would or three, I should say, I lie. There's three things I have always dreamed of getting my hands on again. And mm -hmm. every time I look, they are expensive through the roof to get. One is the Y-Wing in yeah. the box. I want the box because yeah. the box go has got to go with it. Having it, yes, complete would be lovely, but yeah. I want it complete with the box. And looking yeah. at prices today, I'd be looking anywhere between 300 to $500. Oh, easy. Yeah, for sure. The, the ATST, of course, is something yeah. I'd love to get. Every now and again, I see one for about a hundred, yeah. up to three hundred dollars. Yeah. The speeder bike, and I have yeah. to say, uh, there was uh, a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, Dean Mays, who's an author. He posted up uh, a photo of the speeder bike because it was one of the first things he ever got, and mm. he said that that holds such high sentimental value to him. And I felt the same because it yeah. was the very first thing I actually ever opened when I got yeah. everything. And of course, there was a scout trip to go with it because my father had That's packed right. it in that way. Yeah. And today, I was online on eBay and mm -hmm. there was one from a seller in Japan. Yep. The box was in great condition. Everything yep. was there, including the flaps. And I got it at an absolute steal. This guy, I was like, I checked his ratings. I'm checking this. I'm checking yep. that. And I'm like going... This is legit. This is real. This yeah. is my childhood in a box. Like nice. it's funny how one item. Now I've got to go and find a scout trooper with a pistol, a vintage one, so I can put yeah. him on the bike. But the yeah. thing was, it's coming. I paid yeah. for it. I was like, my God, I've I'm getting a piece of my childhood back. That yeah. very first thing, and instantly I thought of that Christmas, and I thought of that photo, and I thought. Wow, the excitement that the kids get at our Christmas, you know, when they open up stuff and they love it, even though yep. now it's sort of, oh, yeah, play with it. It's gone. For me, this is something I've gone, I can have this in my in my domain, in my Star Wars room that people yep, can see yep. behind me here. And I've got that piece of history and I can look at that photo and go, you know what, that thing that I had when I was five, I now have back again and I have mm. the box and I have everything there. It's It's been open. Am I going to take it put and put it together? A bloody oath I am because I want to, <laughs> I want to feel, I want to feel that speeder bike in my hand. Of course you do. Yeah, I, yeah, I, well, I, want, I want to look at that and go, wow, that's, that's, yeah. that's history right there. And it is. And, yeah. and that's the beauty. I think once again, with the toys, especially the vintage ones that have mm. such a big meaning, like, even though in the 90s, um, there are still some of those toys that I have today that I I still have such a strong connection to because that was, once again, that was me getting a resurgence in Star Wars. That Millennium Falcon that I have, I mm. gave to Jack when he was about three. And I can mm. tell you now that Falcon is destroyed completely. Mm. Like everything's been, uh, it's it's fixable, but everything's been pulled apart on it. Where mm, okay. I have my legacy Falcon, that yeah. Ange got me for Christmas. I think yeah. it was Christmas. I do apologize to my wife if I got that wrong. But I have that up there, and that is my my thing up there. But when they re-released the Imperial Shuttle, that was the that I grabbed that as soon as I could, because yeah, okay. they they re-released it, and yeah. there was a website in Australia called Case Fresh, and yes, that was, that's right. and they were the only website and place in Australia that actually had these. And as soon as I saw it, and I thought it's it's about two hundred bucks. I think it was about two hundred. I paid. I had to get it because once again, it was part of my childhood. <coughs> Excuse me, I cough yeah. in there, but it was part of my childhood, and I was like, I have to get it. It's not vintage, but no, that's right. I, I want to yeah. get it. Like 
to be honest, that's in my my other pile of Star Wars vintage things I want to get the Imperial Shuttle. But that's in the when I win Lotto and can get everything. <laughs> that's yeah. the first thing I'll buy. Um, yeah. But when I opened it up. It wasn't electronic like the original, no. but it was from the same mold, the same make, and I opened that thing up, and I have that on display in my room. I was, I've was i kept the box. I've flat-packed the box so I could keep the box forever, but mm. I kept that, and I'm thinking, once again, it made me feel... You know, I remember that birthday. I remember that surprise that my father had, had gone out of his way to, and my, and my mother had, had scraped together all their pennies. So yeah. I'm going to have that. But, you know, when I hit a certain age, I didn't get Star Wars anymore. I, I no. sort of, I, I my interest had changed just slightly. Star Wars was always there, but, you know, it, it was different things at different times. But mm. but now, every Christmas, I say, you know, I'm always asked, what do you want? And I'm like, well, either, oh. either gift cards or Star Wars. It's got to be yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I want the toys. The toys, that's what I'm after. So, Yeah, no, that's cool, man. That's awesome. So yeah, so you know the vi- the vintage stuff means a lot. You know, um, yeah. I, I've I, I still have my original Han Solo blaster that yeah. uh, doesn't work. I have my original Scout Trooper pistol. I have a few of the jigsaw puzzles. Uh, yeah. I've got a few of my figures, not many. I've got one member of the Max Rebo band with half of his piano keys missing. Because <laughs> once oh, again, really? that was one yeah. thing I I picked apart. I have my Admiral Akbar. Uh, and I've got a couple of other figures. So, but yeah, look, my, my dream is that one day when I've got a little bit of money, there'll probably mm. be about four or five figures that I'd like to track down and rebuy. But I'm going to keep them carded. I'm going to keep them in the card. I want to, I just want to have that that memory of what it felt like to hold a carded figure in my hand again, you know, and go, oh, yeah, this, yeah, this is, this is once again, my childhood. And once I say that's, that's the beauty of it all with, with the vintage <laughs> stuff. But, um, but yeah, look, it, it, it was an amazing ride. I wish I had a known as a child, what they'd be worth today and how cool they look when you have them displayed. But at the same yeah. time, I was a child and I wanted to play. Yeah. And that's how we lost ourselves in that universe. We all got to play as Luke Skywalker. We all got to be Han Solo. We all got to fight Darth Vader or be Darth Vader. And that was the... Oh, that's fu- right. I mean, you know, we, we didn't have the uh, technology or the capability no. to rewatch the films any time we wanted to no. back then. So, we, yeah, we lived those adventures. We lived those stories through the toys. Mm. And that's... Uh, why they are so um, important to us mm. is, I think, is because uh, our imagination is at that age is just firing so much, That's and it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's a tangible thing that that uh, we warm to, and uh, always stays with us. And as we get older, and when the importance, the so-called importance of life takes over, and uh, you know, we get our as day-to-day <laughs> um, horrible adult life that we have to live you know yes <laughs> compared to our childhood we think back to those times with very warm memories and we want, want to have a piece of what that felt like again and yeah. whatever that is and um yeah star wars toys is, de- is de- are definitely something like that that we uh you know just just cling to as fans mm. yeah look yeah a hundred percent definitely uh, it's it's just one of those things and uh I, and i can never shake it you know that like uh the no. i think it was the other week I was at a garage sale and I bought the Return of the Jedi, the Battle of at the Sarlacc uh, board game, which once again, mm-hmm. I saw in the shop when I was little. Uh, I never got it. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool to have. And here was one at a guy's place, just out on a desk, fairly reasonably priced. It was, I think I paid like 20 bucks for it, to be honest. Yeah. And in everything was in there. And I was like, I, I can't, I'd be stupid not to. I've got to grab this. So I grabbed that and he had... Also, the Escape to the Death Star board game, but it didn't have a board in it. It had all the pieces and everything else, and it was just literally an empty box, you could say, bar, because the, the main thing is the board. And I got that yeah. for, for like $5, just purely for the novelty yeah. of like going, well, these are two things I wanted in my childhood that I could never have, and here's one incomplete, but here's one perfectly complete. Mm. And, uh, you know, they're sitting here and... You know, getting all those feels and everything there and, and all that sort of stuff. But I have been fortunate to be able to stumble on things from my childhood, like the micro set series. I've got the entire best best bin set, which I had when I was a kid. And once yeah. again, that got tossed out. And about seven, eight years ago, I had this guy in America who, who I'd sent a message to and said, Look, I'm chasing this. And, you know, I'm not willing to pay more than this. And I said, Yeah, if you find one, 
let me know. And within a couple of weeks, he said, mate, I've got a guy who's got the entire three boxes, uh, you know, that has been opened, but everything is in mint condition. And I think in total for, with postage, I paid a hundred bucks. Yeah. So, you know, and I see those sets online and they're worth triple that. Mm. And uh, But once mm. again, I opened it, I displayed it, I, I played with them even though they don't move. <laughs> but that was the joy of it and going, oh, once again, that there's there's a Christmas, there's a birthday that I'm remembering now that I got that. So, mm. but yeah, but the toys, they, they're a part and parcel of what makes Star Wars Star Wars and I guess the, what makes us and as fans as well and why we connect with Star Wars even stronger uh, in, in a lot of ways, so... Yeah, that's right. I mean, it was you know taking a piece of it home with us that's and it. Uh, something tangible from that universe that uh, we could play with and look at and and just hold. You know, is was a very very important thing of the whole experience with these films. 